How's it going Star Seekers? My name's Got Cake and welcome to Star or Shovelware. In this review we're going to be taking a look at Pity Pit, or Pity Pit as I call it. A challenging 2D arcade action platformer where you play as a dwarf called Horatio and embark upon a quest to rescue your wife Gwendolyn who has been kidnapped by a pervy looking devil called Johnson. The game sees you digging your way down through 5 randomly generated levels whilst collecting power ups, coins and all to buy bombs and improve your tools. So here in the main menu of the game we have no options available to us and instead we get a lovely pixel scene depicting a rather sad and helpless looking Horatio looking on as his shocked wife is manhandled by big old Johnson's demon biceps. Upon starting Johnson does one down into the pit with wifey and Horatio takes his massive chin and pickaxe and heroically hops on down after the pair. As we drop into the first level we're given some instructions on the game's controls. We can press A to dig and we can dig downwards or either side of us. We can jump with the B button and if we dig down whilst jumping we'll fire a shot downwards which can be used to activate TNT, damage enemies and break blocks if we have the block shooter power up. Pressing up and dig will toss a bomb upwards as long as we've got one available and bombs can be used to destroy blocks and enemies. They come in several variants with more powerful bombs able to destroy stronger blocks and some have different explosion patterns. Your current equipped bomb is shown in the bottom right. So as well as some simple instructions we also have some game settings in this first section. There are audio settings for sound effects and music and rumble settings and we can toggle all of these on or off by hitting them with our pick. When we're happy we can dig down through this first bit of dirt to begin the first level. Now each time we begin our descent the layout of the game's levels will change. The description says that the procedurally generated but this isn't entirely true. From what I can tell there are sets of blocks laid out in various combinations and these sections are connected together to form the level. Block layouts can also occur multiple times in a level but in general their order and frequency are randomised. The enemies in the game also come as part of these block sets so you'll encounter the same enemies within the same block sections. There are several different enemies in the game and things start off easy with these yellow and red angry Pac-Man enemies. The yellow ones dig up vertically destroying blocks as they go and then converge on you when they get level with you. And the red ones which are a bit more of a pain move horizontally until they're beneath you and then dig upwards. There are also these little devil creatures who just walk back and forth and these turtle like enemies that can't be damaged. Further into the game you'll encounter more challenging enemies such as ones that fire projectiles and these ghosts which chase you down passing through any blocks. Now you can kill most enemies using your tool. They drop a coin on death and your current coin count is seen in the top left next to your current hearts. You begin the game with two hearts and losing them all will end your run. But you can acquire additional hearts in levels and from the shop. So as you dig your way downward you'll encounter different types of blocks. The blocks in the first level mainly consist of soil and rock and some blocks contain materials such as copper, coal and iron and you need to destroy the blocks with your pickaxe to acquire these materials. When you pause the game a list showing how many of each material you hold is shown in the bottom left. Now in later levels you'll start to see solid stone and slate looking blocks which take more hits to destroy with your standard copper pickaxe. Enemy health is also increased in each level and this is where the materials you've gathered come into play. As you reach the end of a level you'll encounter the shop and forge. The shop allows you to spend your coins you've earned to buy extra hearts, materials and bombs and the forge allows you to use the materials you've gathered to craft better tools. Your current tool is seen in the top right and there are two types of tool. Firstly you have picks which have a single block reach and secondly you have shovels which have a two block reach with shovels costing additional materials to craft. Better picks and shovels reduce the number of hits required to destroy blocks and kill enemies. Now in addition to the standard mineable blocks you also have several special blocks. There are TNT and CTNT blocks which detonate a few seconds after the hit sending out a blast. Bomb blocks which can only be destroyed with bombs or TNT and X blocks which can't be mined or blown up. You'll also encounter several different pickups and power ups. Some give you bombs or upgraded tools and others provide you with special abilities such as the hard head ability which allows you to break blocks above you with your head or the block shooter ability which allows you downward shots to break blocks. So working your way down through the levels the difficulties increase steadily and you need to strike a balance between collecting materials and moving as quickly as possible. The ceiling will slowly start to descend on you a few seconds after you start the level and if it reaches you it'll crush poor Horatio ending both his life and your run. It's also important to collect as many coins as possible as you go so you can buy additional hearts. The biggest challenge you'll face in the game is with your limited health so the more you can gather the longer you'll last. 
So when it comes to my gameplay experience with Pity Pit, I have to say I was pleasantly surprised at how enjoyable the game was. It gave me some Dig Dug and Boulder Dash vibes, but its gameplay was unique enough to set it apart from these two. The game is certainly challenging, mainly due to the limited lives you begin with, and a bad layout can lead to a quick death. Luckily, restarting the game is a quick process, and more often than not, layouts provide you with an early pickup or power-ups to help you along. After you get used to the gameplay mechanics, you'll get faster at digging and collecting the most important materials, and be able to reach the third level with relative ease. I found that the fourth level in the game featured a definite difficulty spike, and the combination of ghosts and other enemies often led to quick deaths, despite me sometimes beginning the level with four or five hearts. Now, the game is relatively short, containing only five levels, but there is some decent replayability with its random level layouts. The game also tracks your score as you go, seen in the top right, and you can find your high score on the main menu, but it was a shame to see that it didn't feature any online high score leaderboards, which would have provided more reason for repeat playthroughs. The only real issue I encountered with the game was with its controls being a little sensitive, and sometimes I struggled to drop down through gaps between blocks, or off ledges without continuing forward into enemies. So now we come to rating the game. Now I rate games between 1 and 5 stars, with a shovel a stamp of approval reserved for the worst games on the eShop. This rating is based on my own personal opinion on what a game has to offer in terms of gameplay and value for money to potential buyers. And for a rating I'd give Pity Pit 3 out of 5 stars. It's a fun little arcade game with some nice visuals and gameplay mechanics, and it captures the retro spirits of the games it's clearly influenced by. It's reasonably challenging, especially in the last two levels, and its gameplay mechanics are well designed and enjoyable. But the game's length and a lack of online leaderboards makes me feel that it falls a little short of being a true Nintendo Switch hidden gem. Regardless of this though, it's still a lot of fun, and I'd recommend it if you love classic arcade platformer games. You can get the game from the UK Switch eStore for £3.59, or from the US eStore for $3.99. Alternatively, the game's also available on Steam. And that's it for this review of Pity Pit. Don't forget to hit that like button if it helped you out, and let me know your thoughts on it in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified of future Switch indie game reviews uploaded every few days. For now though, I just want to thank you all once again for watching, and until next time, game on.